Hey everyone, Paulie here from Hard Drive Radio, and today I'm sitting down with Frankie, Ash, and Nikki of New Year's Day. Hey guys. Hi. Hey, what's up? What's going on? I think I say this to you every time, but you have such a good radio voice. Why, thank you. It's the reason I, I got into this business. It's yeah, pretty no much the only job I can actually do. I think I say that to you every time, but I just Maybe drive through again. orders. I could do that. Yeah. But that's a good one. Yeah, that's this about the only skill I have is no and then. good voice. <laughs> uh, so you guys made a big announcement today. It's the next New Year's Day album. Tell us about it. Oh, uh, it's called Unbreakable. I know it's called Unbreakable, and uh, I always say naming an album is is just as hard as naming a band. Like that's it's so hard. It's like the last thing I do, and I can't think of it. It has to just come to me, and sometimes it comes to me on time, sometimes it doesn't. And uh, this one came in the eleventh hour, literally. Like you have to decide something, and it just came to me. I was like, the, all these songs are saying that I'm unbreakable, you know. And it's this song or this record for the first time really represents me in the sense that it's half vulnerable and half powerful. And that's me. I've always been half and half. Hence the hair. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when did you guys start working on this album? When did the writing process start? Over a year ago. Wow. Probably um, more than that, to be honest. But in it, seriously writing, about a year ago. And the reason why you're like, wow, it, it took so long. Well... We got to tour all year with Hail Sermon in this moment, so it kind of broke up the writing schedule, and that's pretty much why it took long. But, I mean, we can all agree that was totally worth it, right? Absolutely. Totally worth it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You guys had a lot of fun on that. I remember I caught you guys. You came through uh, Long Island and played in Westbury, and that was just so freaking awesome. It was great to see you guys up there. It's It was an awesome package, just great bands all around, so I was so excited to see you guys do it. And that tour went on forever. It's not done. It's still not done? It's going worldwide. Oh, my gosh. That's great. <laughs> it's not great. done yet. Yeah, uh, this fall, which seems like it's far away, but, I mean, we're already halfway to Halloween next month. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. I count down to March because at March, it's the six-month countdown. March Madness. Yep. Makes sense. I know. So uh, it's going to be here before we know it, and it's Hail Storm in this moment, New Year's Day again, of course, and uh, we're going to UK and Europe. That's amazing. And I think you uh, also just told me you guys are going to Australia for the first time? Yeah. We're going to Australia next month. Awesome. <laughs> As amazing. you do. Can't wait. We're just trying to check off places we've never been now. So we've never done any South American, never done Australia, and we've never done any, any of the Asian countries. So hopefully those are all things we can do soon. Uh, but I want to get back to the album, Unbreakable. Um, tell me, you know, where did you go to record? Who did you work with? Well, this was the first time I did the record in not one studio it, with one producer in a consecutive 30-day time period. It was broken up into a dozen different studios uh, with a bunch of different songwriters. But um, I, in, in the end, I kind of bounced back and forth between two studios. Scott Stevens, who's responsible for a lot of my favorite Hailstorm songs mm -hmm. and Shinedown songs. And just a really amazing guy. And then Mitch Marlowe, who's responsible for some of my favorite In This Moment songs. So I got the best of both worlds. And um, I just hopped back and forth from studio to studio. Uh, Nikki, Frankie, uh, recording like this, was this uh, easier for you guys, more difficult? Because I know, you know, especially with guitars, you probably spend a lot of time making sure everything's dialed in. You got your tones perfect. Like having to pick up and move from studio to studio recording, was that was it easier for you guys, harder? How'd it go? Um, I always consider everything to be a new experience, not necessarily like easy or harder. You know, you just walk into a brand new world like pretty much every time. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Mitch and uh, Scott are really amazing people. They do work well together as well. So it was pretty easy. It was kind of a first. Yes. Like the fact that we got two producers to agree to do our album, that's kind of unheard of. Yeah. They're, they're really, really good together. They both really believed in it. Yeah. Is there uh, is there any point at which they kind of like pushed you out of your comfort zone a little bit, kind of make you uh, try something new that you were maybe unsure about that turned out really well? Yeah. Every day, especially Scott. And that's why I loved working with him so much. He really pushed me, really pushed me. And there were some days I would leave going, I don't know about what we did today. And it came out better than I could have ever imagined, especially with um, one of my favorite songs in the album is a song called Shut Up because it's so... Uh, such a massively different step in a, in another direction for not just New Year's Day, but for metal bands. Um, it's been described as either the poppiest metal album or the most metal pop album, which is exactly what I was aiming for. So I hope everyone else thinks so too. 
Well, I feel I feel like you know the pop and punk genres have crossed over really well. Maybe it's about time we got a little you know metal pop too. You know what? Honestly, there are bands that have been doing it and touching on it because I honestly think there's so many in this moment songs that if you took out like the double kick drum, you know, or like uh, a lot of the screaming, and you kind of stripped it down, you'd have a pop song. Like Adrenalize Me to me is a pop song. And um, yeah, I think uh, we just kind of took that ball and ran with it. The first time I heard Shut Up, it's, that's the first thing that popped into my head. I was like, wow, this sounds almost like an In This Moment song. Like that was, it was just the vibe I was getting from it the first time I heard it. So I guess that was on purpose. Um, I wouldn't say on purpose, but it was hard to avoid considering both producers had worked with In This Moment previously. And uh, that's just the sound that those producers have. Mm. Plus like, they're fucking awesome, you know? <laughs> That's awesome. I would love to be compared to them, honestly. I mean, if you're going to be compared to artists, I mean, it's got to be ones that you look up to. If you and, compare and me love. to Hailstorm in this moment, I'm going to be super thankful. Um, Tell me a little more, you know, just, you know, writing these songs, was there any specific uh, moments or inspirations that you were drawing from? Well, yeah, all the time. All the time. If I had to sit down and look at the track listing right now, I could tell you exactly what was pissing me off or making me upset or what I was feeling vulnerable about that day. Um, it was, it's really obvious. I really on this album didn't want to be metaphorical at all. And I think the biggest example of that is shut up. It's very straightforward. There's no metaphor there. It's just, just give me what I want. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and that's, I didn't want to be this like deep poetic, you know, try and figure out the message. Like, no, this is what I want to say. So, yeah, yeah, I think you can really tell where I'm at on each song. It's very obvious. Uh, the first song we heard from this album was Skeletons a few months ago now. what That was just kind of released with no information. There, We didn't know that there was an album coming. We didn't know if that was just a one-off. Um, was that always the plan to kind of just like put that out there as a tease, or did you guys know that was going to make it on the album? Um, it was the first song we wrote for the album over a year ago. So we had been sitting on that song for a year, and we just figured – if we're gonna put out something to kind of let people know new music is coming, let's put out the first song that was finished. Uh, for this uh, upcoming run, I assume you're you know you're going back on the road again. Are you bringing any any new production with you for the stage? Um, honestly, we haven't thought about it yet. We just announced this tour, so when we go home, we were gonna kind of start having that meeting about what the stage show is gonna be this time. New Year's Day has fluctuated between, you know football style mascot characters on stage just squirting the audience with blood to no production at all so um i guess it just depends it also depends on what the headliners allow us to do some ba some bands are like no fog machines no lights you just have to go out there and play which we're like bring it on we yeah. don't need any yeah, of that stuff you know but uh yeah well, i guess we'll find out well i'm very much looking forward to it uh i'm very much looking forward to the album release uh before we wrap up is there anything you'd like to say to your fans out there Yes, I hope you guys like the new music. I'm sure you will because I like it. I think it's pretty good. Frankie, you want to say something? Um, I don't have anything on the top of my head right now, <laughs> but we'll see you out there in April. Uh, thank you guys for the constant love and support. Without you, we wouldn't be here. Um, bless up, fam. Oh my god. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> wow. All right. New Year's Day. The new album, Unbreakable, is coming out soon. Get yours. Get your pre-orders. Thank you. Thank you.